Good morning, YouTube. So with today's video, let's dive into a brand that I have plugged a lot, like three, even four years ago. I used to be known as a fanboy. No, it will not be from the brand of Ferrari, yet it is gonna be from an Italian brand. And today we're gonna to be talking about Emil Nogendo Zegna's Florentine Iris. And the decant that I wanted to use for this vi video, well, when you have, when you're a bit of a hoarder of, of fragrances, like your collection is kind of out of control, including the samples, it's kind of hard to find where the actual proper sample is. But this sample, you, you won't be able to see that. This sample I've had for like four or five years. But for this very video, I'm not gonna be alone. I got my man Daver from the channel Fragrance Bros. Let's just get it started. Emil Nagendo Zegna Florentine Iris was launched in 2012 and it's considered a floral fragrance. Before I give you my take, Dave, please give us yours. Hey everyone, Dave, you're here with Fragrance Bros. Thank you, Chad, for having me on, really appreciate it. And I also really appreciate the sample you sent me. So Florentine Iris is an interesting fragrance. I actually really like the perspective that uh, Ermina Gildo Zegna has. I really like how kind of elevated they are and I also, like that they have kind of their own bergamot that they use and they put in every different fragrance. I think that's really interesting. Some of their fragrances I really like, like Javanese Patchouli, I think is really great. Florentine Iris though was one that I really did not like and I tried. <laughs> <laughs> it really did not jive with me. I always try to go into a review with an open mind, and this is one that I was wanting to like, but I did not. I think this one is just really not made well, and that's a shame to say for a, a, a house that is this good normally. Florentine Iris doesn't really even remind me of Iris. I don't get that much Iris out of it. I get a lot of bergamot, I get a lot of citrus at the start, and then a lot of jasmine, and then some violet in there as well. And that's about it. Not much iris in this to be called Florentine Iris. It's a very floral heavy scent, mostly white florals, and it's a very heavy kind of push in that direction. And it reminds me more of a feminine style fragrance. And even through that lens, I still don't think it's that great. I think maybe women might like this a little bit more. And even still, I was trying to kind of contextualize it and try to find something that I liked, but I really didn't. I think this is just okay at best, but really to me, I think this is kind of bad. I think that the whole formula is kind of pedestrian and kind of not put together well at all. So yeah, to me, I think Florentine Iris is pretty bad, unfortunately. Also in some ways, I kind of find this familiar. And when I thought about it, it really reminds me of Venetian Bergamot by Tom Ford, which came out a few years ago. Probably not an exact duplicate of it, but it reminds me kind of that style, which is a white floral and citrus style fragrance. I wasn't a big fan of Venetian Bergamot either, but I know that a lot of people were, and I can kind of understand that with that fragrance more. I think that one is a lot better than this one. This to me is kind of like, almost like their take on it, but in a really bad way. So, so I personally suggest that if you like this one, try Venetian Bergamot if you can find it, or if you don't like this one, maybe try that one and see if you like that better. Anyway, thanks again, Chad. Hopefully I wasn't a big downer on this review. <laughs> Downer Dave, Debbie Downer, depressing Dave. So you're telling me that I spent like 10 bucks USD, when you convert that, that's $12 Canadian on you that you didn't like. Ah, uh, you high maintenance diva you. Dave, thank you very much for doing the very video. I do appreciate it. It's unfortunate that it didn't work out for you, but not all of these fragrances are gonna work. You know what, there's Zegna, Japanese patchouli, you said you liked that one? <laughs> that one did not work for me. The note breakdown, according to Fragrantica, the notes are gonna be musk iris, violet jasmine, and calabrian bergamot. So what do I get out of this fragrance here? Now it's gonna be on the palm because I need some clear skin as I'm gonna be recording with the wife later today. Okay, so this opens up a uh, very fresh, Lots of iris. Dave did not get a lot of iris, but I most certainly do. Lots of violet leaf. There is a, a little bit of that Calabrian bergamot, but not a whole lot. It's really overshadowed by the iris, but also the violet leaf. Those are the two most prominent notes on my skin. The violet leaf, or I should say the iris in this, does come across as a little bit powdery. And during the dry down, it becomes more of a musky base. There is that white floral, of course, as well, but the least prominent note is gonna be the bergamot, the Calabrian bergamot. The two main takeaways are gonna be the violet leaf, the iris, then it's gonna be the jasmine, but it does dry down to like a musky base. This fragrance is marketed towards the men out there. I think that this could actually be unisex. 
plain and simple. It really does come across as a unisex kind of fragrance. It's a very gentleman-like fragrance. And I'm not saying that gentlemen are like nowadays or like feminine. I'm not saying that. I just find that with the white florals, I don't know too many masculine, burly kind of guys like your traditional masculine men would really like something like this. This is a fragrance for someone who does have lavish taste, someone who, who likes the finer things in life. As this does smell, it does smell regal. It smells a little expensive. And I'm also gonna say it as well. This fragrance also reminds me of Prada's Lum, just because of that iris and how it does come across as a little bit soapy. Even though that it's not listed, I do get a little bit of a lavender type of feel. Like the freshness and like that that uh, that soapiness. That soapiness is probably going to be coming from that iris, but I do get like a fresh, clean lavender type of smell. Seasons that this would be best suited for, I would say spring, but also summertime. Not when it's overly hot and humid, but when it's like a cooler summer morning, like when it's like in the 70s and then you're going to work. I think that this would be a great office fragrance, but it's a very versatile fragrance. You could dress this one down to something that's business casual, having that sense of style, to a tuxedo event. I think that you could wear this daytime, nighttime, but when it's like summertime, I would say that more so when it's like when you're working in an air controlled environment, like when it's AC, this will be very, cloying I think when it's in the the hot summer heat also I do think that you can wear it in the fall but not when it's like overly cool just one that like the transition from summer to fall when it when it starts to become a little bit cool longevity was really good I got nine to ten hours off this little sample here so with a bottle this will definitely be beast mode projection was moderate but can be heavy if you over apply especially if you get a bottle price tag Oof, okay these are quite pricey. On eBay, I've seen these for just under $200 American. To be specific, $198 USD. But I have seen these on the official Zegna's website for $270. I don't know if that's American or Canadian. Wife saw this one, wife liked this one quite a bit. She thought it was very fresh, powdery, clean. She definitely gets the iris and the jasmine. And she actually gave me a compliment the other day. She just said that I smell really good. So my final thoughts of Florentine Iris. This is one that I really liked, but not enough to get a bottle with that price tag. This is a very versatile fragrance. This is a signature versatile fragrance for a modern day gentleman who has some of those old school values. This really, to me, a burly, a traditional burly masculine alpha kind of guy is not going to like this one just because of that powderiness to it. So I do think that someone who's old school but modern at the same time, a little old fashioned yet who is up to date, will certainly like this one quite a bit. It smells rich, lavish, and it smells really natural. On like To me, it smells really natural. I get a lot of the powderiness and this is all about skin chemistry. Dave really does not get a lot of that iris. So you're going to have to try this one out for yourself. But for me, this is a four and three quarters out of five. The downfall is that price tag. I just don't think it's worth the price tag. I can get a Creed, an Aqua de Parma for cheaper than this. A lot of these designer luxury brands, they have some great scents like the Ferragamo line, the Zegna line the Hermes line, but they're not worth that price tag. In my opinion, they are not. Yet yeah, this does smell fantastic. If you can get this for under $200, then do so. So guys, that is my quick little review, but also Dave's review of Zegna's Florentine Iris. I'm gonna attach Dave's links down below just in case you haven't checked them out. Dave's been around in the community for a long time, including myself. So we're one of the, the last few remaining old farts in this community. So please make sure to check him out. Great guy. His tastes are a little bit more refined than mine. I don't do too many reviews like this, but this one here, I most certainly did. So Dave, thank you so very much. If you want to see some other, let's say some designer luxury fragrance reviews, then please check out this side here. And if you want to check out some, oh, whatever, some smell rates on some designer luxury brands, then please check out this side here. I thank you for your time, take care, and also make sure to give this very video one of these. Thank you for your time, take care, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching, everyone.